Hey guys, how's it going? This is the Such, and I promised that I would finally start making videos for you guys. Help you try to get through Necro and advance a little bit. I don't have the best monsters in the game, because I have horrible luck. But that's made me really resourceful, so I've had to use monsters that some other people think are garbage, just because they're a little bit luckier. But I will be breaking down Necro tonight. So, let's do this. A couple big things about Necro. Turn order is massively important. You really have to make sure that your monsters attack in the right order so your nuker goes last. Otherwise, he will wreck your face because your damager will go first, no damage will get done, and eventually his damage stacks do so much that they'll just nuke your whole team in one hit. So... <clears throat> Let's go over his skills real quick. So this is for B10. I know that his skills are really similar, but I just want to show you because B10 is the goal. And I'm going to show you my team here. So first off, his first one is he attacks all enemies, recovering 50% of the damage dealt as HP. So right there, heal block is really, really important. <clears throat> Massively important. Otherwise, he's just going to keep healing up. Even if your dealer is doing what he's supposed to, doing enough damage, he's, he's not going to be fun. Not going to be fun at all. Uh, second, he's got Imprisoned Soul, so pretty much he steals the monster that's done the most damage since the last time he used Imprisoned Soul. So, again, if you've got a squishy damage dealer as the one getting imprisoned, you can kill that monster and get it back as fast as possible, which is really important. Okay, so... Last one, Time of the Dead is passive. Uh, the attack speed of all enemies and allies is suppressed and cannot exceed a certain cap, which I'm led to believe is 115 speed. <clears throat> now, if your monsters have higher speed, they will stay in the same order. And I'll go over that in a little bit here. <clears throat> so, all skills influencing the attack bar also don't work. So, like... Uh, Bernard's attack boost, um, Megan, specifically Verd, is completely useless here because of this. Okay, so now we are going to go over my team here. So go back into runes real quick. Let's see. All right, so first monster, really important, is Lynette. No, we had uh, an HOH for her. I'm pretty sure like everybody has her. She doesn't need to be max skilled, but it does help. Mine is, just because I farmed it like a psychopath for the whole weekend. And it actually ended up being worth it. So, with her, her skills, her first one hits three times. Because, again, the boss is just by himself. There's no crystals, nothing. It's just a single target. So, you hit him three times. The second one is four the third is just one, but it's based on max HP, and it's a fat nuke that heals your whole team. So again, it's pretty helpful to have, but I found the best way to use her is full revenge and not rely on that damage as much. I use someone else as my nuker. Uh, her leader skill is also speed. I do use that just to make sure that everybody's at that 115 cap. Um... Though I'm pretty sure everybody is. I just don't have any other leader skill for the five that I use. So, the runes for her, because she has so many multi-hits, full revenge. So that gives her a 45% chance to counterattack, which is really important. Getting those first three hits in knocks his shield down. It begins with, uh, I believe, seven charges. And when you knock out all the charges, then you can start dealing damage and putting on debuffs. You can debuff him until that happens. So for her, really you just want her to be tanky enough to take some hits. And you want a crit rate maxed. So if she does use that one that's based off of max HP, Gravity Shot, it will always crit. Adding attack isn't really going to make it scale too much more, so it's just important to get the crit. So it's reliable damage you can bank on. Consistency is everything for Necro. Okay. Alright, so second monster here. Bella. Standard Bella build. You don't have to do anything too crazy. 
which was violent revenge or violent focus. I'm sorry, violent revenge, violent nemesis. Those all would work perfectly fine too. Uh, she's really really fast. She's first in the attack order. But I mean, it's it's just so she goes as often as possible to heal because she's one of my two healers for this, and she can land an armor break. Of course, really helpful, and she helps a lot with clearing the waves. I probably would use Chasun, but uh, like I said earlier, I have horrible luck, and I don't have a Chasun yet, so I rely on Bella for pretty much everything. All right, third monster here. Colleen is massively, massively helpful. I always thought that Harpoos were total garbage, which eh, they kind of are. Their stats are really, really low. But her skill set is awesome for this. So her first one hits twice. And it's a 50% chance to reduce attack power, which goes up to, I believe, 70% at max skill, which is great. Between the two hits, it gives you like an 85% chance to land a debuff without accuracy and resistance being applied. But it almost always does it. Uh, second one throws sharp feathers to attack... Pretty much, it's a heal block. That's the whole point. And it also hits, I believe, three times. So again, multiple hits to knock down that shield. Very, very important. So you can start getting debuffs on. Because without them, the boss will hit you way too hard. And you can't just build tanky. Or you won't do enough damage to him. So, you have to land debuffs. Third one. Uh, it's a heal for your whole team. 50% when maxed. Three turn cooldown. Plus... Attack power increased with three turns, so it's pretty much like a permanent attack boost, which again helps do as much damage as you can, as fast as you can, to nuke this boss down before he kills you, because it's a race against the clock. Now, all three of those pretty much are farmable. My last two aren't, but specifically Adrian, I got a ton of from Unknown Scrolls. So he's not max skilled, but I made sure that his third is his attack speed and crit rate buff for three turns. Really, really important. Helps a lot with clearing waves. And of course, that's going to help a lot on the actual boss itself as well. If, like, Yen lands uh, an attack speed slow on any of my team, this will keep them at the cap. So, he's the Fire Elven Ranger. Uh, he has six-starred just because he was too squashy. So, uh, oh... I totally derped. I meant to cover Colleen's runes. So she's Violent Revenge. Again, revenge, super important, just to make sure that you're getting attacks on the boss's face. You need to get rid of the shield. And then Violent here as well, just to make sure that she gets extra turns. I mean, Violent is ridiculous. It's one of the best sets in the game. Even after they nerfed it, it's still incredible. One extra turn is a game changer, so great to have so violent revenge she has hp 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 but that's just because she has good enough speed subs 40 subs that uh i didn't need speed because there's a cap on the boss anyway i don't use colleen anywhere but necro and raids so that's it so back to what i was covering before i derped and forgot to cover runes so Adrian again, he is Violent Revenge again because his first skill hits th twice. But the way it works, you have a chance that is proportionate to your crit rate. So like if you had 73% crit rate, you have a 73% chance to attack a third time. I made sure that his crit rate is maxed almost maxed once his buff is active which it's pretty much always active because it gives himself about a 33% increase to crit 30 I believe maybe 20 I don't know if it's compounded or not but it's enough to where this is consistent crit rate buff is also important to the other monster here in a second but again violent revenge make sure that he's getting those revenges with that skill because that's multi hit again Multi-hit is huge. Has HP recovery too, so again, if Colleen misses it, you've got this one to rely on as well. It's one of the two most important buffs for this. Heal block and attack speed slow. 
Second one is attacks four random targets, but again, the boss is only one target, so all four will hit him. Four hit combo, not bad at all. And then 50% chance with each hit to do continuous damage. Continuous damage is applied before the boss puts his shield back up. So it's really, really good way to do a ton of damage to him really quick. And that third skill is the one that we just covered with the attack speed increase and crit rate increase for three turns for your whole team. Awesome. Super helpful. I know that I have Lynette's crit rate max just in case the buff is down. But uh, it helps a ton for the last monster we're going to cover here in a second, which is Yen. But uh, first his runes real quick. He's HP, crit damage attack and that's just to make sure that he doesn't get melted which sometimes happens anyway but um just give him enough crit and a good amount of crit damage he's not the main nuker he does do a decent amount of damage so this crit damage doesn't need to be through the roof so last one yen again not farmable at all i'm sure any rakshasa well not any but definitely Hua and Yen, pretty interchangeable for the last monster. Now the key here is they have to be the slowest one. So if you look at the speed, she has plus 12, the slowest of the five, to make sure that when they all attack the boss in that first wave, she has the highest chance to land and attack slow. So the skills real quick, you're probably pretty familiar. Yen's been in the game a long time, but uh, first one uh, attacks once. With a 50% chance to land attack slow. Now, it's not the most reliable thing in the world, but it becomes more reliable with Violent, Revenge, and her passive, which just, it's, she gets so many turns, it's ridiculous. And if you were to max her skills, I believe this would get up to, what, 50, 65, and 80% chance before accuracy and resistance are applied, so that's pretty good. Uh, she'll use this one for the most part. I think the second one's on a pretty long cooldown, five. So she'll pretty much be using the first. Again, it's not her job to break the shield, so multi-hit's not super important. You just, you need her to land this attack speed slow. Really important. It makes it way easier when the boss isn't going endlessly and just beating you up. Second skill, fast swing. Continuous damage for two turns. You can inflict that one dot per attack, and it's three attacks. So this one's just good to add some extra damage on. can help melt the shield, but really, the first one's your main concern. So, uh, now her passive, 50% chance to gain an extra turn. It does not uh, interfere with the violent proc rate, so it can actually bounce back and forth between this and violent, so you can get strings of like five, six attacks still. And it happens, and it's beautiful when it does. So, like I said, you want to get lots and lots of turns, so I did Violent, Revenge, of course, and she's Attack, Crit Damage, Attack. You just want her to hit like a Mack truck, um, and she's got 66 Crit, which is right where you need it to be in order to get 100% Crit with that buff from Adrian. 150 Crit Damage with good enough amount of attack. You want to make sure she's got 15k-ish HP with some decent defense too. You don't want her too tanky, otherwise when she gets stolen by the boss, you won't kill her in time and she'll just murder your whole team. But it's enough to get her to the boss. And then 58 accuracy too. Again, nothing crazy, but it's more than enough to land it often enough. That's the whole key. Now, we've gone over the individual monsters. We're going to cover real quick on the actual boss itself. So... Attack order. Like I said, it's really important, right? So you've got all those revenge runes. Everyone is on revenge except for Bella. Lynette has three sets of it. So usually you're going to get at least one revenge proc. Burn that shield down. But when they start attacking, you want Bella to go first. Because she's not really going to help that much. And usually it loops around if there's enough hits. And when she goes the second time before the boss does, you'll land that armor break. So Bella first. And if you notice... If I can find Bella here. Bella is at 190 speed. So always first. Second, I have Colleen. 
so that she gets that attack buff off as soon as possible, if it's up. Um, and she doesn't do a whole lot of damage, obviously low attack. Her point is just burn down the shield, get that attack up, heal up as soon as possible. So she's second, 146 speed, right? Third is Adrian. So he's got 130. Again, I just wanted to make sure that his crit rate and speed buff were up before Lynette goes because that third skill is pretty important for adding some extra damage and definitely before Yen. Um, here's Lynette. Again, not a ton of attack, so her speed is exactly one faster than Yen to make sure she goes first. She has to go before Yen. Okay, attack speed, attack order is everything, remember that. And then you got Yen here, 116, crazy, well not crazy, but a really good amount of attack. She's going to hit pretty hard, and you're going to be able to mow through him pretty well. So, I'm going to show you what it looks like here. The first couple stages can be a little close, just because again, you don't want to build your mobs too tanky, or they'll just get steamrolled on the boss and if you build them too squishy they'll get steamrolled here so you kind of have to find a good balance just remember that really the one monster you need doing all the damage is your damage dealer so that would be yen for me you saw right there yen immediately getting a violent and or passive proc right away and there's there's a lot of stuns from these crystals which is kind of obnoxious but if you've done Dragon and Giant for a long time, you know that it, you could have 100% resistance on every monster. They'll all stun all your monsters every turn. It's just how it is. So you just make sure that you build to account for that. The Violent procs definitely help get rid of the stuns and make sure your team doesn't get melted. So again, just kind of smashing through here. Every once in a while you get the revenge counters and just kind of mush these guys down. I just like watching Yen proc endlessly into people's faces. It's a lot of fun. And if you watch a little timer down there in the bottom corner, we started about 16.30 for this run. My runs usually run about four minutes, which is not short, but it's consistent, and that's far more important. I'd rather run four minutes with 100% crit, or 100% success, than six minutes with 100% success. Make sure it's not insane long, but the key is, if you're running two minutes with 50% success, you're pretty much wasting twice the energy to use the same amount of time. So, make your team consistent. It takes a while to fine-tune it, but um, it's, it's really rewarding when you do. If you've farmed Giant and Dragon, which usually everybody has if they're trying to work on Necro, um, you know how rewarding it feels to finally get any floor on auto, let alone the 10th floor. So, took me like a week and a half of just grinding this team out. I think I six-starred Yen and Adrian in the same day, just because I was tired of failing this stupid dungeon. So, we're on the fourth wave here, about two minutes in, so we cleared the trash pretty quick. These crystals do hurt pretty bad, but uh, what are you going to do? You got two heals and technically a third with Lynette, so you, you should survive. Alright, so here, again, if you notice the attack order, Lynette actually went after Yen, which is kind of annoying, but it usually rectifies itself most of the way through here. So, if you notice that attack slow... Look how many extra hits I'm getting in because he hasn't gone yet. Just wailing on him. Huge. And on that attack um, decrease on the boss is huge to keep your guys alive as well. So it's awesome when Colleen lands that. So again, attack speed. You got all those buffs up. Yen did the most damage, so she's going to get stolen. Now if you look here the attack speed debuff is still on the boss. That's important because now you have a little extra time to kill Yen, get her back, and heal her up before the boss attacks again because you get them back at half health 
which is really difficult. Okay. So I know I'm not going to have like a good time count here because I put it on times two just so you can see the attack orders. But now because we hit it in, on slow, we had the boss slowed. You had enough time to get Yen healed back up so the boss didn't just smush her face. So now burn the shield again, get that attack debuff, heal debuff, armor break. Now he's going to get worked. He's going to get wrecked by Adrian and Yen. Especially with that buff. Didn't get the slow, a little annoying. But hopefully we can get it here, but we're probably just going to kill him. I remember when he dies, he gets revived with about a third of his health. Got a whale on him again. And you only have, I believe, six turns to kill him after that, or it resets and he will revive again, which is pretty annoying. So if he starts doing that, it kind of snowballs and gets out of control pretty quick. But if you notice that, Lynette nuke hit pretty hard. So there you go. There's the auto team right there. It's been really successful for me. I'd say it's probably like a 95%. Oh, awesome. Unknown scrolls. Probably like a 95% success rate. But uh, it's worked pretty well for me so far. Um, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to be doing a lot more videos here in the future. Um, see if we can get good following. Help each other out. Did this mainly for my guild. I'll be 100% honest, but... This game's all about progression. Of course, you want to compete at some point, but if you can't progress through dungeons, you get stuck and you end up getting frustrated, and that's no fun for anyone. So I just want to help everybody out as much as I can. Again, comment if you want. I'll respond to everyone. And I hope I'll be hearing from you guys soon. So this is the Hipster Yeti out of here. All right. Bye.